there's concrete paving, but there, there's a lot more to it. That it's very important what's what's down below as well, and uh, a big part of the process is getting the grade ready prior to placing the concrete. So right out there, um, say in the stretch from Adam Street to Granite Street, we've already got the dirt there. What we do to prepare the grade for paving though, is we take a big piece of equipment called bow mag. And what it does is it basically goes out there and tails up the grade. And the top foot or so, six inches to 12 inches, that's dirt. Down below is sand. And what we do with that bow mag is it'll till 18 inches deep, bring all that up, sand and the dirt and mix it real thoroughly. Well, the purpose of mixing the sand in is, is just so that we have a drainable base because with concrete you don't want a situation where you're going to get water or any uh, abundant moisture trapped underneath that concrete. It's got to be allowed to seep through. By mixing in the sand and the dirt that, that means it uh, will extend the life and performance of that concrete pavement that we put on top. So after the contractor goes through and, and mixes up that sand and dirt real thoroughly uh, they will then take a, another piece of equipment called a sheep's foot and uh, it basically is a big roller it's a real heavy piece of equipment with knobs on a, on a on the roller that's why we call it a sheep's foot and it will go through and compact that grade down real tight our guys actually have ways of going out and testing that compaction we test the compaction we also test the moisture we want it uh, not too dry because if it's too dry it won't compact we don't want it too wet because then you got another problem it'll just squish out on you so in that sweet zone of the right moisture that They'll get that uh, sheep's foot on there and compact it real tight and get that, uh, that, that grade to a specified density so that it's strong enough to hold up the concrete pavement and strong for the life of, you know, of, of the time the concrete will be there. Well, after that compaction is done, then we got another piece of equipment they, they use to trim the grade to specified elevations. They actually set up a string line and they got sensors on that piece of equipment that go along that string line and will trim off that dirt to a specified elevation so that we make sure that the concrete and, and whatever else, uh, the base that we're going to put before the concrete are all the proper thicknesses and will be placed at the right elevation. After trimming is completed of the base, of, excuse me, of the grade, of the dirt grade, then we go in and put four inches of milled asphalt base down. And uh, again, that, uh, that base, it's porous, but it also compacts very well and provides a, a very solid base for the future concrete. We put that down, they compact it with steel dome rollers, get it in tight. Then again, with that trimming uh, trimmer equipment, they will follow that string line and trim that base to that specified four inch depth. Then we're ready for the concrete placement. But ahead of that concrete placer, people will see we got these, uh, what we call dowel baskets, is they're all dowel bars that are all uh, linked together in a basket. What those dowel baskets are, um, we will put those where the future joints are going to be in the concrete pavement. Concrete has to be jointed because when it sets up and hardens, it actually shrinks and you want to have those joints cut or sawed at specified distances so you don't end up with random cracks. Random cracks are bad because that's a place where there might be future settlement or faulting in the concrete pavement. But if you specify where those joints are going to be, then you have controlled cracking. And we put these dowel baskets in those locations so that as the crack contracts and expands and contracts and expands, you don't end up with any uh, settlement occurring at that concrete joint. On a lot of highways, you can tell where they didn't put dowel baskets in because you, you'll hear the thump, 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 thump as you're driving down a concrete road. Well, that's because the concrete pavement is faulting at those locations and uh, where the joints are, and there's no dowel baskets to help transfer that load and prevent that faulting. So that's what crews are doing ahead of the concrete paver. They're putting those dowel baskets down where there's going to be future joints. Of course, now we're uh, at the point of delivering and, and placing the concrete pavement. The concrete comes from a concrete mixing plant. It's got a very uh, specified blend of concrete or excuse me of cement of gravel rock water and other little admixtures to, to increase the performance of the concrete and that's all well mixed at a plant and delivered out to us in mixing trucks they back down the uh, base and they'll place it right in front of our concrete finishing equipment and people will see us it dumps out of the uh, the concrete mixers right in front of the uh, finishing machine what that finishing machine does is it'll spread that mix to, to evenly across the grade and uh, it will consolidate it 
what that means is it'll take out any air, any free air, and, and consolidate that concrete until it's a nice solid mass. Uh, it, a lot of air in a concrete is bad because it'll, of course, affect its strength, its ultimate strength in its life. Well, this equipment will take out any free air and consolidate it until a solid mass. Then at the back end of the finisher, we'll strike off and finish that concrete pavement to its specified depth, make it very smooth. And behind the equipment, you also have uh, other men with uh, floats and 10 foot wide screeds uh, finishing it off just to make sure that it's nice smooth concrete pavement. They also behind the machine will take a wet burlap and drag it. That gives it just a slight texture so it's not glass smooth. We don't want glass smooth a road because people need to have a little bit of roughness so that uh, there's friction when they need to stop of course. And uh, beyond that finishing operation maybe up to a couple hundred feet back as the concrete starting to dry out and set up they also spray a white curing compound is what it is and what that does is it seals off the concrete it'll keep the moisture and heat in that concrete and that helps advance uh, and retain the, uh, the the chemical reactions that cause concrete to harden and uh, help it to not only in, you know gain strength faster but also over time uh, have, have a longer or a better strength um, ultimately so that's the operation in uh, placing and finishing and curing the concrete. That night or the following morning after so many hours after the concrete's had some time to harden where it's it's hard enough for people to get to, to walk on it and to get uh, sawing equipment on it then they'll be uh, behind uh, the, the next day or, or that evening sawing the joints at the specified intervals along the concrete so that as the concrete continues to harden and cure uh, it'll shrink and they'll have these controlled crackings at these specified joints. And then at these uh, controlled cracks or these joints, they'll be able to seal them up with tar and thus also help prevent uh, moisture from getting into the concrete and doing any, any type of damage that, that moisture does when it's below pavement. After five to seven days, the concrete will have its uh, enough strength for us to get equipment on it. We do require the um, concrete to gain around 3,500 pounds per square inch strength, which is uh, plenty for handling uh, most uh, trucks and, and construction equipment and what else you need. So after five to seven days, we'll be behind there uh, opening up sections and allowing traffic to cross it. For example, we've already got some driveways open where we poured the driveway and then after five to seven days of that driveway being poured, we've been able to open traffic. And that that's a very happy moment for a lot of people, especially those that have been caught behind, you know, this operation closed off for some time.